Hey, before we get on with the video, just wanted to let you know that we now have a community Discord server. All of us over at Num Network are going to be on there frequently, and we hope this will be a way for our community to interact with each other instead of just the YouTube comment section. On the Discord server, you can talk all about Smite, look for a group in Smite, promote your own content, discuss our videos and give feedback for our videos, as well as talk about anything else that you want to talk about, whether that's movies, TV, other games, memes, anything. If you're interested, then the link is in the description. Uh, but now onto the video. So far this year has been a very good year for a company in particular, uh, one that we're going to be talking about today on this edition of Smite Community Concepts. That company is Disney. Right, okay. I was wondering where you were going with that. That was... <laughs> Like a high res Titan? No. <laughs> Disney has yeah has had an incredible year. I mean, I think it, I think it's kind of alright if your company is battling with your own company for the top of the box office. <laughs> Uh, but also this month and around the time that this will be uploaded the new edition of Lion King is coming out as well a classic Disney movie Aladdin came out this year as well yeah and so this video I'm going to let you know about four different Disney themed skin concepts from people that have submitted on our submission form if any of you want to submit your own skin concepts if you have your own uh, then the submission form is always in the description but without any further ado uh, this first one is <coughs> madness carry on Okay, cool. This yep. one's called Madness in One. This one is called Madness in Wonder Lane, and it is a Chunga skin. Get it, Matt? It's like it's like Alice in Wonderland, but it's Madness in Wonder Lane because it's like Smite Lanes. I'm assuming. I'm hoping it's not a typo. <laughs> No, I like that. And it's from God of Yawn. Let's uh, hop into the appearance. Obviously, this is an Alice in Wonderland themed concept for Chunga. Are you familiar with Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. <laughs> is there anyone that isn't familiar with Alice in Wonderland? I've seen a little bit. <laughs> I haven't seen the old ones. I've just seen, like, the Tim Burton ones. Oh, they're terrible, though. Okay, but everyone knows what happens. Like, the Mad Hatter and the Tea Party and the White Rabbit. Yeah, I don't know how the story ends, but... So, Chunga's appearance for this skin, as drawn by our fantastic artist, Roman Samco, she has a green coat with a blue dress underneath and a red ribbon on her bottom. Nice. Is this a, like a mashup between Alice's clothing, like the blue dress, and the Mad Hatter's clothing, with the green coat? Yeah, maybe. That would make sense for, like, Madness in Wonderland, if it's like she's got some Mad Hatterness and she's, like, I don't know been in wonderland for a while and she's turning into the mad hatter that would be a cool Ooh, idea yeah and also it goes on to say that uh, she is wearing a prominent green hat which is also like the mad hatter the mad hatter however has a hat with is it 10 out of six on it for some reason 10 slash six yes but uh this skin is it has uh six six slash seven on it very <laughs> cool idea <laughs> I like it. I love that. So the rabbit stays as a rabbit for the skin concept, and uh, he is wearing a blue coat, uh, has an eye that always twitches, a bent ear, and a teacup resting on his back. So very much perfect. The personality of the rabbit. I don't know his name. Does he have a name? Uh, the white rabbit, I think, is all he's ever referred to as. Cool. So that is the appearance. So the first ability of the skin, a fragment of a clock that has three hands with hours that go past 12 o'clock. So I'm assuming the little little fragment in front of her is a fragment of a clock and with the three hands showing and it like ticks past 12. Is 12 o'clock something to do with Alice in Wonderland? No, it's just like a late for the important date sort of thing. I am familiar with that. Her second ability, she's engulfed by a bubble and suspends herself in the air with an umbrella. Is that an Alice Wonderland thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know it that well. It's just creative, though. For a third ability, roses and cards uh, sweep around the circle. Obviously, cards I know are linked to Alice Wonderland. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And for her ult, she throws out a stopwatch. I was just thinking as well, her first ability is a clock that goes past 12. Her two is a bubble with an umbrella, and her three has roses in it. Are they references to other Disney things, which are Cinderella, Mary Poppins, and Beauty and the Beast? Oh my god. Maybe, I don't know. They actually could be, though. Yeah. If not, I think it's still pretty cool. Also, the voice accent would be British. This next concept is called King of Lions. Uh, it's for Sun Wukong, and it is by Syndicate. I was just thinking, like, a lion in Disney? It, is there even a lion in any Disney? I can't think of a Disney film that's got a lion in it. <laughs> 
So this skin concept is a, a very simple one actually. It is just uh, Sun Wukong as Rafiki, who is the monkey in The Lion King. The guy with like the blue face. The guy who like... <laughs> the guy with the blue face. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who like strokes Simba's head with the dust stuff. That guy. The big monkey that you see holding him up in front of the cliff. There you go. And his usual like cudgel thing is replaced with the stick that Rafiki holds in The Lion King. He holds a stick? Oh yeah, he's got yeah, a walking he does, stick. Yeah, he has like a little walking stick with like some fruits, I think, on it. So yeah, pretty cool. That's it. Although this is a Sun Wukong skin and we do have the third ability to come. Yes, I'm excited for that. I hope he's transforming into all the different animals is my... Wow, what a, what a great guess. Who would have guessed that? <laughs> I was proud of the idea. You can oh, yeah, piss totally off. Different animals. Oh, why has <laughs> no one else thought of that? Right. Um, so the first ability, instead of obviously his cudgel slamming down, it would be the Rafiki stick. For the second ability, he would put the paint from the like coconut thing that he like puts on his head. He'd paint that all around the ground. Is it a coconut thing? Yeah, the paint is like in the coconut, and then he like takes it out and then paints it. He would take it from the nut and put it on the ground as he spins around. Pretty cool. Pretty rare. Nice. Like it. Yeah. The third ability is always we will leave because that's the best. The ult, he would climb a tree, leaving the decoy below. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. As Rafiki does in the film. So for the third ability, his bird would be Zazu, who is the bird from Lion King. Ooh. Yeah. The lion would be Simba. Yeah. And the ox would be Pumba. 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 The warthog. Oh, yeah, you Pumba. Know. I know. You know. That's good. I mean, there is no copyright infringement here, right? No. Nope. So there you go. Nice. Simple yeah, it's nice. Like. Another, like, really detailed skin. Like, it'd be so easy to make the cudgel spin just like... And he spins the stick. But the detail of, like, the paint being put on the ground is just, like, unnecessary. But it adds a level of depth to the skin. Uh, what, if, what if it, like, stayed on the, on the ground for a while? paint yeah oh that'd be cool i like that his voice accent would be robert G- guillaume guillaume Gu- guillaume i think it's pronounced guillaume who i did check did voice act rafiki in the original lion king what a coincidence that is king of Sun Wukong. thank you very much syndicate so this next skin concept is by joey and it is called cinder hell uh i wonder who is he who is it for? Hmm. Hmm. who's it for and what's it based oh. off yeah, obviously another classic Disney character, Snow White. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a Ganesh skin. Yeah. <laughs> Snow White Ganesh skin. <laughs> it's just Ganesh dressed in the Snow White cut. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like wearing a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and a long frilly dress. <laughs> So, to the Hella, we'll start with Light, obviously both dancers described in the skin, so we'll start with Light Help. This is based off Cinderella's appearance when she attended the ball, so after she got changed and stuff like that. Oh, this is a good idea. Yeah. I just figured it out. You did, well done. So she'd have a <laughs> shining blue tiara and a very puffy dress reaching the floor, uh, instead of her regular kind of floating appearance like Hell normally does. Her hands would glow a light baby blue. She would have elbow high white gloves and a necklace with a gigantic white pearl in the center. Her hair would be blonde and put into a bun on top of her head. I'd like to have seen the shoes. Oh, okay. Now maybe that could be a VXG or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just start, starts leaving shoes behind every step. <laughs> every step she leaves in <laughs> Hundreds of shoes <laughs> trailing everywhere she goes. The Dark Hell stance would be based off of Cinderella before she tended the ball. <gasps> Yeah. Her hands would glow a dark orange aura instead of a light baby blue aura. She would have the same dark brown chest piece that Cinderella uh, had on in the cartoon. And similar sleeves like that she usually had in the cartoon, but instead coloured light brown instead of, I think, the like normal blue colour that she normally has. I think probably to distinguish the fact that this is the dark hell, right? If you see, like, the Yeah, light. to make it look actually different and... I like yeah. that, I like that. The lower half of her dress would be light brown, with ragged edges cut up and sliced. So, you know, it's got a bit of wear and tear. And it would only go down to her knees. In this stance, she would float, unlike her light hell stance. She would have black hair and the same head wrap Cinderella had in the cartoon. Yeah, that, that's the appearance. Very cool, like, you know, Cinderella. Onto the abilities. For the first ability, in her light stance, she would launch a light baby blue orb that sparkles as it flies forwards. And in dark stance, she would launch a dark orange orb that explodes at the end of its range. If it's a dark orange orb, why isn't it a pumpkin? 
Oh, I do kind of like the fact that it's just subtly orange. It might even look a little bit tacky if it was a pumpkin flying forward. Mm. Yeah, okay. For the second ability, uh, for her light stance, it would be a blue sparkly aura on the ground, and her dark stance would be a dark orange aura. So same sort of colour scheme with the first ability. Oh, and the third ability as well. Expel a light baby blue aura with sparkles in it for the light stance and the dark stance expel a dark orange aura. In all fairness, there is not a huge amount you can do with Hell's abilities. Except make it into a pumpkin. <laughs> Imagine if just the third ability just like smashes a pumpkin on the ground. Just flies over here. <laughs> yeah. And for her ult. So what, when in light stance and using this ability, her dress would slowly wither away to go into dark stance. And for dark stance, sparkles would surround her as she yeah. changes into the light stance. I really like those transitions. I like it when hell skins transition like that. I mean, I think that's actually what happens in the cartoon. Like, you see little sparkly effects around her as the dress gets blown out and stuff. How have you seen all of these but never Toy Story? <laughs> it always baffles me. This is the gr- one gripe that you... Okay, this was one of many gripes that you have with me. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of seeing Toy Story seems to offend you on some kind of deep level. <laughs> also, the... I mean, it, it's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you tried to move on, but couldn't. No, it's a classic. <laughs> Like just childhood, like it's our, it was our childhood. It came out in nineteen ninety five. In nineteen ninety five, I was minus four. Yes, I was over all that fairy tale shit by then. So once we like could watch things, it we was like seven years old. <laughs> once we could watch once things, once we grew eyes <laughs> in the three years. Yeah, we all know it takes three years for babies to grow their first <laughs> pair of eyes. <laughs> Which aren't as good as adult eyes. That the milk eyes fall out at some point and the new eyes grow in. <laughs> at which point the eye fairy gives you a pound <laughs> in exchange for the eye that you hide underneath your bed. <laughs> oh, <so> fuck. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, also, for her accent, Light Hell would be a regular American with no pitch alternating. Uh, but for Dark Hell would be a slightly more deep and angry voice than Light Hell, but not as angry as, like, the base skin voice for Hell's Dark Stance. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Just like a, a pissed-off servant girl. Yeah. Who's been poorly treated. And for the last concept of the episode, this is... This is Mad Hatter... Mad Hatter... Baron Samadhi. This is Mad Hatter Baron Samadhi. <laughs> Ooh. That is the right god to give a Mad Hatter skin. Yep. Exactly. This is by good friend Space Sheepy. So obviously, as you can see, this does obviously have references to Alice in Wonderland. She also put a spin on it as well, right? Different skin colour and stuff like that. I like it. Yeah. It's a different colour scheme as well, isn't it? Like, it's it is, an entirely yeah, like, different colour scheme. The clothing colour scheme is, is very different. And also the, I believe, the piece of paper in the hat isn't like a number. It's like an actual like card. L- yeah, it's the Ace of Spades by the looks of things. Yeah, I also love love what she's done with the staff yes the staff is awesome the tea coming out of the teapot that is incredible yeah what a great idea that is pink gloves gray hair does he have great he doesn't normally have gray hair right or does he in the cartoon i don't know i think yes he he does in the cartoon he has like white hair yeah i mean it it suits the mad hatter to have like crazy gray hair yeah be honest if they could make the effects so like the tea is constantly pouring out of the um teapot at the top and stuff like a Little flowing animation on the staff. That would look so good. That'd be cool. So for the first ability for the skin, it would be teacups that shoot out hot tea, as also shown by some ability <laughs> art that uh, Space Sheepy has provided. <laughs> it would shoot out hot tea. You can't see the difference between hot and cold tea. Any character that gets hit by it. Oh, that was really hot tea. That wasn't <laughs> cold tea. That was specifically hot tea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they aren't like, ow, my it hurts. They just go, ah, fuck. The universal reaction to that's hot, which is, ah, yeah. fuck. <laughs> uh, the second ability, as shown also by Especially Bizarre, is a splash of tea. Hold on. Just to be clear, what temperature is that tea? Oh, it doesn't, doesn't specify. Jesus Christ. It could be any kind of tea. If the character gets hit by it, it'll say, oh, that's an undetermined temperature of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> for the third ability, a stream of hot tea replaces the snake being thrown out. So, like the snake from the staff. And for the ult, the coffin is replaced by a giant teapot. Also shown by <laughs> Space Sheep's art. That 
is a really cool design for yeah what the coffin should be like it's not just a regular teapot thought has gone into that i really like it no yeah like that's a really awesome stylized teapot it just looks great and for some reason it like suits the mad hatter i don't know why that teapot specifically it just looks like yeah something that mad hatter would have with the little door on the front as well on the hinges it's so good yeah his accent for this skin is crazy and eccentric just like the mad hatter great they are four very cool disney themed skin concepts adam what was your favorite don't answer that because it intervenes with the poll that we've got. As always, we have a poll in the top right corner of the of the video, uh, the little I. If you click that, uh, it will take you to the poll card. You can vote for your favourite concept from this episode. If you didn't know, we are currently getting people's opinions for a debate that we want to uh, discuss soon on the channel. This is about uh, whether new Pantheon should be introduced into the game versus whether existing Pantheon should be filled up. If you have any anything to say about that discussion, any way that you lean, do feel free to let us know in the comments or uh, by tweeting us at nonnetworkyt. And if you'd like to see more videos from us on screen right now uh, is the previous episode to Smack Community Concepts. That was a summer themed episode and that is in the left video. And on the right video, there's a video. So, <laughs> so thank you for watching everybody. Uh, take care. Bye bye.